If you have a desire to sew but hesitate because you're concerned about devoting hours of time to a project, well, make a scarf. In fact, in today's episode of Sew Amazing Scarves, you can select a style that's so speedy that you can make two in an hour. It's creativity with instant success. Not Your Average Scarf is my first option. Made with either knit or woven fabrics, these two-toned scarves have definite focal points. Learn how to knot, then sew. Sew Amazing Scarves, that's what's next on Sewing with Nancy. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman is made possible by Baby Lock, a complete line of sewing, quilting, and embroidery machines and sergers. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Madeira, specializing in embroidery, quilting, and special effect threads because creativity is never black and white. Koala Studios, fine sewing furniture custom built in America. Clover, makers of sewing, knitting, quilting, and embroidery products for over 25 years. Experience the Clover difference. Amazing designs and Class A needles. The Not Your Average Scarf can be sewn either with knit or woven fabrics. For lightweight woven fabrics, you're going to need a half of a yard of two fabrics. And they, the fabric doesn't have to be the same width, just both must be woven. For knit fabrics, a heavier knit fabric, you'll just need a fourth of a yard of two fabrics. This is quite beefy, and you'll see the scarf when I'm finished. If it were lighter weight, then you'd need a half of a yard. I'm going to show you one of my samples I made, and this knit only had a fourth of a yard, and it was just too lightweight. So lightweight fabrics, a half a yard, heavier weight fabrics, a fourth of a yard. 9 inches crosswise cut or 18 inches. This was 18, this is 9. And you're going to fold both fabrics into a tube, meeting long edges, the lengthwise edges, and serge or just a little zigzag stitch on a knit fabric to sew a fourth of an inch seam allowance. So you have these long tubes. You know, they're 60 inches or 45 inches long, and you're going to turn them right side out for one of them. The second tube you're going to make with openings, with two openings. You close them up after a while, but from each end you're going to sew two to three inches and then leave an, a comparable opening of two to three inches. On the opposite end I have the same thing, stitched two to three inches and then an opening of two to three inches. The magic turn comes through these openings. After you've turned both of your tubes, to the right side, which doesn't take very long. You may want to press. Now on knit fabrics, I didn't have to press the seam, but you'll need to know where that seam is because the next step, you're going to fold the scarf meeting the ends. Now let me show you on this scarf. I have it folded in half, and then the seam allowance is on the outer edge. All the way around, I have positioned the seam allowance, and you'll see why in a minute. We're going to knot first, so to keep those ends even, I'm just going to overlap them and pin. This will help in the knotting process. So I have one tube with the seams on the outer edge. I have already pinned the ends of the second tube, and I'd overlay one on top of the other opposing ends, just like that. I have a hole in the middle, and the long ends are going to go through and create a knot the opening. And I pin the edges because that way I can make sure that the edges are even and create a pretty knot. There you go. Unpin the ends. This is a logistical scarf. A lot of turning and we're going to find that side seam of one scarf, the side seam of the other scarf, and pin them together. Stack those seam allowances. Just one pin, that's all you need. Remember that opening that I left. Here we go, we're gonna, here's the pin, here's the magic. You tip the pin through the opening and pull and pull until the complete ends of both circles come out. Ta-da! Use a fourth of an inch seam allowance and serge or zigzag for a knit fabric around the edge. 
you do this to both ends of the scarves. And you can see with just really four seams, two lengthwise seams and these two circle seams, this has been stitched and you pull it out and now you have a scarf. You'd sew this opening by hand, you'd sew it closed and here you have a knit scarf. You're not your average knit scarf. So let's put this on the mannequin to show you. We have the woven style, which was made with half of an inch, excuse me, 12 inch wide strips. Excuse me, not half of an inch, 12 inch wide strips. This knit fabric was made with nine inch wide strips. You can loop it twice, wear it like this, but has a great accent and it's amazing construction and relatively easy to put together. Ever think you could complete a sewing project in less than a half an hour? It's true, the 20 minute scarf takes about 10 minutes to cut and another 10 minutes to sew or serge. With only four seams, the 20 minute scarf just may become your go-to gift to serge or to sew. We're using knit fabrics for this particular scarf. It has three fabrics, as you can see, with the three different colors. Compatible knit fabrics are put together and drape fold. You can get whatever color you'd like to be most prominent by just a little twist of the wrist. You'll need a fourth of a yard of two fabrics. That's nine inch width, the, the green and the turquoise, and then the stripe, we used a half of a yard. We'll need nine inch widths. They're nine by 36, four panels that are nine by 36. You could change the length. This is just a guideline. So 10 minutes to cut out these four panels. Then you're going to serge or sew the seams together, the panels together. And one stripe will go with a solid and then the other stripe will go with the second solid. In this particular seam, we've used a four thread overlock stitch. Here's a close up of that stitch. It's traditional serging at its best where you're just zipping right along trimming the raw edges and creating a seam. I kind of like the serge stitch because it has a lot of stretch. This particular fabric does have considerable stretch. Most knits have the greatest stretch in the cross grain and that's how you're cutting the strip. So perfect combination. If you didn't have a serger, just use a little zigzag stitch. So two seams to sew the panels together. Here's the other panel that has been sewn together and then just meet opposite ends so that a stripe goes with a solid and vice versa and serge the top edges. That's it. Now we did not serge the outer edges because of knit fabrics. They don't ravel. So you can definitely leave them unsewn on our finished garment finished garment, finished scarf, you can see how the four panels come together. And because we're twisting around the neck, creating a neck framed piece, there's really no worry about these outer edges. Something probably 20 years ago I would, ne would have never done and now I do with great ease. It's fun to put together, easy to sew. The 20 minute scarf with two fabrics that are a fourth of a yard, one that's a half of a yard and just a little bit of serging different fabrics, different looks, that statement couldn't be more obvious when looking at these two scarf options. Even though we use the same pattern, the edge finish plus the fabric choice changed this scarf from elegant to casual. It's called an S-curve scarf. Two donut shapes are the pattern pieces. Wonder how it's made? I think you'll be surprised. The knit fabric is the red one, obviously, and we've used a lettuce edge finish, which I'll show you how to do in just a few minutes. Lightweight drapes, you can wrap it around your neck, wear it however you'd like. The more elegant fabric was made out of woven fabric. It's the same pattern piece. The edges are just surged with a three thread overlock stitch. And this is perfect for weddings, put it over a black dress. It's kind of fun to wear. The pattern piece, as I mentioned, looks kind of like a donut with an opening in it, a large donut. They're 21 inch circles. And in the pattern that accompanies today's program, the book that accompanies today's program, you'll find the pattern or you can make your own and you can see the opening. Cut two, 
no matter what fabric you're working with, cut two. And you'll need five eighths of a yard of fabric. So here we have two circles that have the opening. And now you're going to meet right sides together of just one of the ends. I have a little tape here that tells me that's the wrong side of the fabric. I'll remove that and let me lay this out. So you can see what you're going to do right now is make it look almost like a figure eight, a sideways figure eight. And you would serge or stitch this seam. And I'll do this one. This is called an S curve because after you stitch this and I open this up, you'll get a sideways looking S. Now I've just pinned this obviously, but you can kind of see it's one large S. Now when, we made, when I made this fabric, I just surged the edges just with the overlock stitch and it was ready to wear. Now the knit fabric, to give it that flounce look, the lettuce edge requires a little extra stitching at the sewing machine and I'm going to show you how to set your machine and do that stitching. To continue with the look of the S scarf giving a knit, a lettuced edge, a fluted edge, we're going to do zigzag stitching. And because this is a knit fabric, it's important that you choose a stretch needle or a ballpoint needle. I've chosen the size 75, the smaller of the two sizes, and would work with all purpose thread. Matching thread in the bobbin and in the top that matches your fabric. Obviously, this is just a little bit of a different color. And I've purposely chosen to show you the stitching of it a different color, so you can see it a little bit better, see the stitching that is zigzag stitch and here you can see what it will look like when I'm sewing but to know the settings I did some testing which I would recommend that you do as well I have a 3.5 width and the length set at 0.7 you may put it at 1 but just test you know test your fabric now you're going to have a tug of war with your sewing machine you're going to tug the fabric in the front of the needle and behind the needle and not pulling way down here but very close about one inch from the needle the knit fabric will roll so just doing a little bit at a time so that when you're zigzagging you're going to try to get the zig in the fabric the zag right off the edge and pull and stitch and I'm pulling it as taut as it will go and just do some testing as I mentioned because it does take a while to do this because it's such a short stitch but I like the look so yin and yang pull and push tug of war whatever you want to call it this is what you're doing around the edge and when you're done sewing and I'll just clip the threads and show you this this has contrasting thread slightly contrasting and notice how it lettuce it curves so this s scarf can have great looks elegant to casual this scarf started out as six circles with a little creative cutting each circle turns into a flounce it's practically a no sew technique since non-raveling interlock knit is the fabric of choice here's how to make a flirty scarf the scarf six different components that are just attached in the back with a little bit of stitching. Again, as I mentioned, non-raveling fabric, a knit, it's interlock knit, a third of a yard. You'll find a pattern for this, or you can make a 10 inch circle and make it into a flounce and you'll cut three shapes down this area. There's two layers of fabric, so you'll have six flounces. Now the cutting is probably the key element for this. You have the shape that's on the circle. And I'm going to use a rotating cutting mat because I'm on an angle and just simply start at the top and cut. And as you go around, just shape it and curve it. I'm using the 28 millimeter rotary cutter and I've just gone off my line a little bit and it's not going to matter in the least. Just keep cutting and cutting and turning and turning and hopefully I've cut through all the layers. I think I have. I'll unpin the tissue and then you'll see how the flounce appears for this scarf. And we move this and then we'll just lift it up 
and there we have this nice flounce. And notice the drape of it. It's, it's really a very attractive drape. So you'll cut two layers, usually at a time. So you'll cut three sets. You'll create six flounces. Now, any which way you work at it, you can do this a variety of ways, but you could take two of the starting point ends and sew them together end to end. One set, two sets, and then three sets. We've talked about very quick sewing techniques. Well, this requires a little bar tacking at these pairs. And then from a scrap of fabric, cut, oh, let's say one by two piece of the knit and wrap the ends. I realize this is almost a no-sew technique, but isn't it fast and creative? You can even try different fabrics in this combinations and just do the stitching and you have an accent to put over a basic color top. So here it is, draped around the neckline and it looks attractive and fun. And just because you know how to sew and cut, you can create it. For scarves with plenty of dimension and texture, turn knit fabric into yarn type strips and tie knots. From fleece to slinky knit, use a half of a yard of fabric or less to fashion your version of the all knotted up scarf. This is almost a no sew project, working with fabric fits the Sewing with Nancy theme. And the sample that we have here was made with an interlock or a slinky knit fabric where square knots have knotted in a pattern 12 fabric strips together, fabric yarn strips. Now, if you're working with a heavier weight fabric, such as a fleece, you're going to get, of course, a much bulkier look. Working with the knit in the crosswise direction, that's where it has the most stretch, is what's going to achieve the yarn effect. You can cut one inch to a half inch wide strip of, strips of the fleece, give it a pull, and it becomes more yarn-like. The narrower it is, of course, the less texture you'll have. Don't go less than a fourth of an inch on, on fleece. It will shrivel down to nothing. On an interlock or slinky, you're going to cut one inch strips. That seems to be the best. And just cut the strips. And then if you want to make long strips, sew ends together. But I'm just going to show you that you just pull it and look at how it curls to the middle. And you have a version of bulky yarn. I've done many Sewing with Nancy programs, over 800, and I'm able to demonstrate upside down. Not this time. I have to do some knots. I'm going to have to turn this to the right side, but before I do, I'm going to show you the yarn setup, the fabric yarn setup. You're going to create 12 strands and pin them together on a, across the board and separate them into groups of six. The ends of the yarn have been clipped together so that you don't have a nest of yarn around that area. So we're going to make square knots and left over right and right over left and find the outside strips and tie knots of a group of six. So I'm using the outer strands and going to tie two square knots about four inches, three inches from the end. And you do the same on the other side. And now you see what it's like for me. I always work upside down. Here you see I'm working upside down and then I would gather three strands from the middle of each grouping. And then I'd tie another square knot, two sets of square knots. Then I'd go back and forth, back and forth. You can tie square knots probably better than I can. And you just make a pattern. For those of you who were around when perhaps you did a form of macrame, which is again coming back as a folk art, you can see that that's basically what's happened here. We take a close up look. Here are six strands that have been tied, another six strands, then three strands from each set tied into two square knots, another set and you have a very textural look. Depending upon the fabric color and shape, you have a great interest that has, as I said, dimension and texture.
When most of us see a conglomeration of outdated ties hanging in the back of a closet, we might consider them as potential yard sale items. Today's Nancy's Corner guest thinks of ties as storytellers, items that are ideal for art quilts. Please welcome Deborah King. Deborah is an art teacher as well as an art quilter and has great quilts to share with us. Welcome to Sewing with Nancy, Deborah. Nice to be here. When I saw an article about you in the paper, my little local paper, we both, both went to the same high school, um, I couldn't help but say, we gotta show this on Sewing with Nancy because your quilts have great character, great depth. And the first quilt you made is called Fall. It is. And tell us how you got all these, all these ties. Well, the ties came to me as a gift from a close friend when her husband passed away. Mm -hmm. She had a bag of ties of his, and um, she thought that um, I could come up with something to use them in. So they sat in my studio for a sure. while. And um, I was inspired one day when I was um, using this fabric to create uh -huh. a fall tree, and sure. the tie colors just... Oh. Um, lended themselves to the quilt. What's the first thing you did when constructing this? With this quilt, the first thing I did was weave the ties together to create the outside shape of the leaves. And the interesting thing, Deb, is that you did not disassemble them, that all the interfacing is in them, they're whole. Yep, I left them as is. And then um, after I had that assembled, I used oil pastels to go in and draw the um, mm -hmm. shape of leaves on sure. top of the, the ties themselves. And then you just stitched over them. Yes. It, it, so you can see the shading between the different colors. That's really smart. Yes. Very, very good look. And let's take a look at the trunk. And the trunk again, <laughs> that was woven together. Uh, really, really lovely. But then you got inspired not only to do one art quilt in this series, you have three. I have three. And let's let's look at winter, because this is dramatic. It, it was one of my favorite ones to do. And it has a lot of dimension. The The trunk is a tr tie, or many of them. It's a, a lot of black ties. I had to ask a lot of men I knew <laughs> to donate a tie or sure. two. I also like to visit the um, thrift stores to sure to pick up t extra ties. And you were telling me earlier that white ties are the most tricky to find. They are, especially at a thrift store. So for the, the background, it's... Uh, a little bit of white fabric, but then uh -huh. some white ties also. Really charming. So we had winter, we have fall, so then comes spring. Spring, yes, and spring is um, when the tree is just starting to bud mm -hmm. out. So I have the, the ties themselves hanging on the tree with some little buds. And they're very dimensional. You, you kind of stitch leaves, you were telling me? Yeah, they, they, um, they hang out. And then the, mm -hmm. summer, the summer quilt has a lot of leaves that I just stitched right onto the tie and then cut out. There is a lot of interest with uh, not only fabric, but thread. You use variegated threads mm -hmm. and you use beads. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot to be be shown here. Yes, yes. <laughs> and trees are trees represent change to me, just like mm -hmm. men's ties. They're kind yes. of a useless piece of fabric, or a, you know, that men wear. But uh huh. And they change in style. So what better way to incorporate them in some art pieces, and, and a good memory. And I, I loved it. I love working with the ties. And I'm sure your friend is very appreciative of this. She is. Oh, well, Deb, it's been a pleasure to share your art quilts with you. With others, I, I got to share them, see them up close, and perhaps some of our viewers will be able to go to an art gallery and see them sometime. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. If you would like to find out more about Deb King's art quilts, you can find all things Sewing with Nancy at our online website at nancyzeman.com. You can click on Nancy's Corner, and at the 2700 series, you'll find a link to Deb's information about her great art quilts. Well, this is our second program of our three-part series on So Amazing Scarves. We'll be back next time with our third version, and Nall will be showing you 18 to 20 ideas. If you really like this show, you can watch it once again online at nancyzeman.com. 
We have a blog so that three times a week I send out information on sewing, quilting, or embroidering that you can interact with me, find ideas that you might like to sew, quilt, or of course embroider. So thank you again for being with us on Sewing with Nancy and as I say at all programs, bye for now. Nancy has written a fully illustrated book entitled Sew Amazing Scarves, 20 Easy Sew Options that includes all the instructions and the four patterns from this three-part series. It's $16.99 plus shipping and handling. To order the book, call 800-336-8373 or visit our website at sewingwithnancy.com slash 2709. Order item number BK2709, Sew Amazing Scarves, 20 Easy Sew Options. Credit card orders only. To pay by check or money order, call the number on the screen for details. Visit Nancy's website at nancyzeman.com to see additional episodes, Nancy's blog, and more. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman has been brought to you by Baby Lock, Madeira Threads, Koala Studios, Clover, Amazing Designs, and Class A Needles. Closed captioning funding provided by Oliso. Sewing with Nancy is a co-production of Nancy Zeman Productions and Wisconsin Public Television.